Hi, my name is Joey and welcome to the Penn Writing Industrial Division. My journey begins last year when my friend Darius passed away. His family entrusted me with his collection. Darius used to model the Pennsylvania Railroad from Pittsburgh all the way up to Erie. The layout was called the Allegheny Secondary. And previous to that, he modeled the Reading Railroads, Wilmington and Northern Branch Line. He loved the steel industry and loved anything with Pennsylvania and railroading. I promise his family that I will continue his legacy in the Pennsylvania Railroad research as well as the Reading Railroad and also continue displaying his collection here in Arkansas. This channel as well as the land is dedicated to Darius himself and to all who love model railroading. He loves sharing the hobby and he told me that you can't enjoy the hobby unless you share it with other people and I believe that's very very true. When Darius passed away, I was living in a very small place. And so to recreate something that he created was not feasible. And so I opted for a switching layout. And that's when the Penn Reading Industrial Division was born. The layout was a 10 foot by 7 foot L shaped layout, 33 inches wide. And it featured a fictional town called Emma, Pennsylvania. And the railroads served the town, the town served the railroad, just like many of the towns well, at least the railroad towns back in the 40s and 50s. And I wanted the layout to look like it was deep in the Allegheny Mountains, off in a valley somewhere, and I wanted you to be immense into the actual scenes of where the trains were running through. I have a whole playlist of the old layout that you can watch on this channel. Fast forwarding to 2023, I was able to move to a new place and so I expanded upon that old layout and now you have here the new Penn Writing Industrial Division and this is a 6 foot wide, 14 foot long layout that is now, has, now has a double main line loop as well as a branch line loop so you have three loops that you can run trains and Darius always said share the hobby with, with as many people as possible and so that's why I'm doing here. It is June 14, 2023 and here's the current progress of the layout. So let's get started with a small tour of the layout. Welcome to Emma, Pennsylvania. This was the town that I modeled on the original Penn Reading Industrial Division. And here is the more expanded, larger version. Now, the track plan has pretty much stayed the same from the previous layout. The only difference is the Pennsylvania Railroad main line is now double track with crossovers. And then to the left of the double main line is going to be the Reading Branch Line. Old railroads will serve the town of Pemba, Pennsylvania during an operating session. As you can see, all the buildings are still intact. There are a few windows that have been popped out during the move. And so we're going to give a tour of each individual industry. So here we have two industries. The one in the foreground is Boyer Oil. Boyer is actually an oil company in Pennsylvania that was along the Wilkes-Barre branch line. And so I kept the name Boyer Oil to represent an actual oil company in Pennsylvania. And I'm not sure if it was actually served by the railroad, but we're going to be serving the town of Emma with boiling oil from the railroad anyways. Also here in the background, we do have the Emma cement industry. And this is a structure that the Rise built, both kit bash and scratch built. You can see here to the left, I believe he scratch built the silos. And, and so we're gonna have a, a cement industry here. This can hold about four car spots, 
But as you can see by the length of the track, we could probably hold about maybe up to eight cars here. So this will be fun to switch in and out and to put cars on spot. Our next industry is called Hummel and Sons Furniture. You can hold four 40 foot box cars underneath in the bays over there. And also the name Hummel comes from my friend Michelle Hummel who passed away in 2022 as well. She suffered from cancer for a very, very long time. And while I was visiting Pennsylvania as a touring drummer, we had a great, great friendship and she loved trains. And so we went all over Pennsylvania to Horseshoe Curve, to Scranton, to Strasburg, to Hershey, to Harrisburg. And so we went to all the different kinds of museums and different model train displays and I wanted something to represent her on the layout. And the sons, she has two sons, so Hummel and Sons Furniture is and the street here that is served, um, that's served by the railroad. And actually, this is one of those industries that the town serves the railroad in that they make furniture here, and the furniture is transported by train to all over the United States. Moving right along, we're gonna talk about this building that's in the back. And this was originally just a background building on the original Penn Reading Industrial Division. Now with this new layout, it is going to be an actual industry. It's going to be called the Valley Automotive Works. You're going to have auto parts boxcars come in and they're going to be unloading auto parts for the industry. And so this massive building was another structure that Bryce uh, created and I believe it was kit bashed by a few other structures that put together. Right here in the foreground with the two windows still popped out, I still got it those back to the uh, back inside but this is a this is called the Emma freight house and this is going to be a freight house that represents about three or four different companies and so this will make a nice challenging uh, operation because you need to spot the box cars and flat cars to the proper spot because a lot of these buildings that are, even though they're connected they are different companies and so it's just a freight house that represents all different companies that come in, they, create, they want their stuff delivered to all over the United States and so that's what the railroad does. And the, the, the uh, track in the foreground that's right here, this will be just a storage track that has extra cars. In the very foreground is Emma Depot. My friend Johnny from Structure Quest Customs, he put the kit together for me and I painted weathered it. And also here you have the Pennsylvania Railroad Tower. Now like I said, here's the Pennsylvania Railroad Main Line and there's also a platform for the Raining Railroad. We're going to have Pennsylvania, we're going to have passenger operations along with freight operations. Moving right along, as we continue our way around the layout, this is a bare section here and this is going to represent a lot of the Allegheny scenery. And so I am calling this Durbin Grove. And my friend David Durbin passed away a few months ago. He modeled the Union Pacific Van Buren subdivision. And he had a massive, massive layout. And so this is a dedication to him. And what we're gonna do is, in the Alan McLennan, Virginia and Ohio fashion, have a tunnel and then have the train go over a nice arch bridge like the Pennsylvania Railroad had. And it goes back into a tunnel into the other side of the layout. Now, I want you to feel like you're in Pennsylvania, and also, I cannot run a 100-car train like the Pennsylvania Railroad used to do, but I can definitely give you the illusion that we have a long train, and so breaking up the layout into different scenic vistas will definitely uh, accomplish that. And so this is one of those sections where the train's gonna go into a tunnel and out into another tunnel, and so you'll just be immense in that little scene and it won't take away from the rest of the layout and also will make the, look, the layout look a lot bigger. Okay, now coming around the bend from Durban Grove, we enter Vine Street. Now the name Vine Street comes from the jazz song by Benny Carter called Vine Street Rumble. Also Alan McLennan from the Virginian and Ohio had a Vine Street on his layout. So it's full of a dedication to Alan McLennan and to one of my favorite jazz artists, who is Benny Carter. And so Vine Street is actually going to be a road that goes across here on the back end of the yard here. And Vine Street Yard is the name of the yard for the layout. Also here you have the Pennsylvania Railroad main lines that come through here. You have the yard lead, which also goes with the, continues into the 
reading branch line, and over here is the reading branch line, which will continue all the way around. So you do have, theoretically, three loops. And we have a branch line, and then you have a double main line for the Pennsylvania Railroad. Here we do have three sub and yard tracks with a nice little yard ladder that feeds into the yard here. Going further down, which we will look here soon, um, it will be the uh, roundhouse area. And so steam locomotives, diesels will come through here and will end up over here somewhere. I'm not sure what I'm going to do in this area just yet, but basically the locomotives will come through here and then they'll go into the yard, pick up their train and go on their journey. So let's go further down here in this section of the layout. Here is more of a track level view of the yard looking towards the town. And so the idea is to have the illusion that the town is further away than it is. And having the, the town behind the yard, one gives access to the yard to do operations, but also a little bit of forced perspective to look like it's a lot further away and makes the layout look a lot bigger than what it really is. So looking here in the center of the layout, this is a piece of fascia that is temporary. Right here we're going to have Vine Street Station. And Vine Street Station is a station stop on the Pennsylvania Railroad along with the Reading. Now if you go to like Erie, Pennsylvania, the New York Central along with the Pennsylvania Railroad both share the station together. And just like Chicago and many other places around the United States you have uh, a passenger interchange. And so that's the goal here is to have a passenger interchange with the Pennsylvania Railroad and the Reading Railroad. And so with this fascia here, I cannot fit a massive station. There's not enough space. And so my buddy Johnny, who has been a great help in building this layout with me, he also does beautiful work which, with scratch building custom structures. And so Structure Quest Customs is his business. He is going to build out of styrene a nice, uh, I guess I would say a nice shape of a station. So there will be a window or an opening here so you can look into the layout as if you're inside the station look out, out onto the platforms and that will give the illusion that you're inside the station and that there is a station here and a station stop. Now we arrive at the roundhouse and I will be calling the roundhouse the D. Chagnon Locomotive Works or Locomotive facility. I think facility will be a better uh, name. And the, for, the reason for D. Chagnon, Darius's last name is Chagnon. And it's, it will be a memorial for Darius since this was part of his collection along with all the locomotives that will be featured on the layout. He will have his name on the roundhouse. And so here we will have the roundhouse turntable and also this track here will be the lead for the roundhouse. I'm not sure what, what I'm going to do yet. I know a coaling station needs to be here. Maybe a diesel, a little bit of a, uh, not a diesel, but uh, sanding towers. There's a sanding tower there. Water tower, obviously we need a water tower somewhere. Um, and also, I'm not sure if I'm going to be having another track that goes into here, but I think that's what my plan is going to be. Also, I like to have a track for the cabooses. And so I may have modified this section a little bit. Once the roundhouse is in place, then I will go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do in this area. The town will go into the divider here for that backdrop and will disappear out of sight. And so it will give the illusion that the town goes somewhere else in the Allegheny Mountains and will rise here down in the yard area and then goes further, further away out west somewhere. Okay, now we're coming along a nice broad curve, going back into Emma, and you can see all the tools are sitting here on the edges. Uh, the plan here is to have some scenic divider to separate the both sides of the layout, and I may do a rock cut, but also there are a few different items that I can use, structures that can be beneficial to helping with the division of the different scenes. and so. This is more the front of the layout. If you walk into my place, this is the focal point of the layout. And so the idea is to have something that's very scenic. You can't see the whole layout 
in its entirety. That way you have to walk around, it will force you to walk around the whole layout to see the rest of it. And so I think over here I do have a diorama which is a beautiful covered bridge which is also a coal trestle. Now back in the steam era they used the coal trestle so you have a little branch line or switching locomotive that will go across on this trestle. It will dump coal into a chute which will go down into the tenders this way. And so theoretically you know I can have something like that that will work in this area on the curves to separate both towns of Emma and the Vine Street section. So we will see what happens and I'll show you that piece that I am talking about. It's a beautiful, beautiful diorama based structure. So here is the diorama that I would like to build in one of the corners of the layout. This is called the John H. Murray and Sun Coal Distributor. It's a laser cut kit uh, made by Laser Modeling 3 and this is gorgeous. I will have a, a quick, uh, a quick uh, picture of what is here, even though you can't see it on the camera. It's, it's a beautiful structure, and I want to have it on an angle to separate the two towns or separate some of the sections of the layout. So let me know in the comments below where would you like or where you think is best to put this kind of structure on what corner of the layout. This is a group effort, and I want this layout to be as communal as possible. So that way we're all involved here in building this layout. So yeah, let me know because this is a nice covered structure with a coal trestle and it, is def it definitely fits the era of this layout. And I need to make it high enough because I do have double stacks and I like riding double, uh, bottling and running double stacks. So uh, yeah, we're going to definitely make this high enough so we can accommodate the double stacks as well as all the other models on the layout. Okay, so now for the wiring of the layout, I am going to be using uh, 14 gauge for the bus and 18 to 22 gauge for the feeders. I think I have 22 gauge for the feeder wire. I will create more videos on how I will weather, excuse me, how I will wire up the layout. And also, I'll be using the NCE DCC system. As you can see here, I have a few of the controls here that uh, are hidden out of view. I do have the power cabs, I do have the uh, boosters from Darius's layout, so we will be using his system for sure. Also, I do have a lot of the lo lo a lot of loose trains, and what's great about these drawers is that you can keep all, your, all of your rolling stock nice and s secured inside these dresser drawers. These are probably like 50 bucks from Walmart, and like, like you see here, this um, keeps them nice and safe and out of the way and the more stores that you have the better that they are secured the longer these models will last you can see that I am using three different codes of track on this layout for the Pennsylvania Railroad main lines I am using the code 100 track and the Atlas track is very very reliable also when you are working and running older models they, the flanges accommodate the, well actually the rail accommodates the older flanges on some of these models and also when I have folks coming to run their trains not everybody has a, um, a, a scale wheels and stuff like that. Some folks still have plastic wheels so I wanted the track to be universal for everybody to run their trains on the main lines. The Reading Branch Line I do have Atlas Code 83 and because it is a, it's a branch line the track is not, um, I, I guess, will be not maintained as well as the Pennsylvania Railroad main lines. And so the lower height of the rail gives it a more realistic look for a branch line. For the industries, I am using code 70 from microengineering. And that's a very low profile for your track. That way, it gives the illusion that the track is pretty much beaten up like the old days and the and the railroads they, they you know they're a very cheap company i mean you know and i mean well not cheap company the it's a cheap industry and, and then what i mean by that is they'll use everything they can to save some money and so when you're working with industries they're not going to use the best rail and the best ties they just some they need something to lay there so that way the locomotives and the rolling stock can go over and utilize and serve the industries just enough so that they can get their job done and get back on the main line. And so that way the Code 70 is going to be used for all of the industries as well as the yard. 
Also, I am using code 83 turnouts from Walters. These are number eight turnouts and they are absolutely beautiful here. And I'm gonna pan here to show you the detail on them. They are gorgeous. And so we'll be using these on the main lines. And also for the yard, I am using code number, um, excuse me, I'm using code 83 number eight. And I have some Atlas as well as Walters for the yard. We are using number six turnouts from microengineering for all of the industries. And you can see here, forgive me here, I got a brand new tripod and I am still learning how to use it. We're using a lot of these code 83 turnouts for the, for the uh, industries as well as the yard tracks. And these are number six turnouts. So it looks more realistic. And it's what I have available along with all the other track. And so I wanted to utilize as much of the track as possible. Also, it gives a great perspective and it shows folks who come here who are model ram rotors or are new to the hobby or want to get into the hobby, the different kind of codes that you can use for track and how they all can work hand in hand. First, I would like to thank everybody for watching this video. And to all the new subscribers, thank you for following me on this journey. Feel free to leave a comment and like the video. We will have a lot more content for you in the future. I am a full-time railroader, so it can be difficult for me to film. And plus the editing time and filming time to have a video being uploaded, it takes a bit. So I hope that everybody is patient with me and that way we can move along with this layout. I do have a roadbed video coming up along with a creating the curves here. I have a nice how-to video doing the curves. I also will be doing a lot more videos on operations, more how-to videos on scenery, and this is going to be a great fun experience. This is Joy with the Penn Branding Industrial Division. Thank you again and have a blessed week.